Hey guys, so I often get recommended to try out uh, distributions based on Debian testing and Debian unstable. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about my thoughts on those kind of distributions and using them in production environments. And when I say production environments, I talk mostly uh, really about your home workstation, moreover, anywhere else possibly, you know, your, uh, your professional workstation as well. Um, but um, a lot of people consider Debian testing to be a... Um, an alternative, maybe even a sort of more a safer alternative, or a you know a, a differently packaged alternative to Arch. Uh, whereas Arch, you know, they obviously well known for running very new versions of packages, being a completely rolling release. You, in theory, never have to reinstall it, and um, you can just keep it going on and on and on again. And um, and a lot of people um, often like the philosophy of Debian, and they're very, you know, you know they they find find the idea of Debian to be a, 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 as a as a Linux hub, as a sort of a cornerstone of the overall Linux community to be somewhere that they want to be. Will often turn to Debian testing in um, an attempt to try and have a newer operating system or an operating system with newer packages uh, um, in the uh, realm of a rolling release so they never have to reinstall it as well rather than of course Debian Stable which is known for having rather older packages and of course um, uh, having a very scheduled release um, yeah having scheduled releases so the thing about Debian testing, and one of the reasons why I don't personally use it, and I know a lot of you guys have had success using Debian testing as your daily driver, but the reason I don't use it is because um, it, it, it's sort of by uh, its, its name, so it tells you that it's not designed to be used in a production environment. I would say that it's designed more um, so that people can have an opera, uh, like a workstation to use and test out Debian in a very, you know, live and, and real environment, you know, like a, a very, um, a, a almost like a, a beta that you can use on a day in day out basis so that you can properly test software as it were. And it'll give you, you know, if you wanted it, your primary motivation for using Debian testing would be to test Debian packages. And you would do that by using Debian testing in a day-to-day -day environment so that you could then you you could spot any bugs in the wild now if you weren't you know sort of if you know if you didn't really have any interest in testing debian i would very much opt for the arch route because um for a start there is no package freeze so when debian so from time to time debian testing will freeze the packages in its repository similar to how a state uh, a scheduled distribution does it so that they can then be more thoroughly tested before they go before a debian stable um, release is then formed. So um, even with Debian testing, you don't get as newer packages as you might in somewhere like Arch Linux as well. And when Debian testing isn't wholly designed to be a rolling release in the same way of, of Arch, you, you can't necessarily expect it to, and you can't necessarily expect um, you know other users of Debian testing to be able to support you in that way as well although again many of you guys often of course you know a lot of you guys have a great deal of success with that but um for me there's just like arch is the you know arch is the um the distribution or the or the set of you know the the, the family of distributions that were designed for the up to the minute package releases and um uh you know and and, and for that kind of community environment as well. Although I think in a lot of recent cases now, people who are looking for rolling releases that aren't necessarily Arch are probably looking more towards a distribution like Solus now. It's got a, you know, a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of attention over the past year or so, and uh, and Ike's been doing some absolutely fantastic work on it. So um, I think quite possibly now when it comes to rolling releases, uh, not only have you got the choice of like Arch, um, Manjaro take the Arch repositories and they freeze them for a short period of time, but a much shorter period of time, and um, it, you know, sort of in in timed batches, so that um, you have a slightly more, um, a, you know, like a not necessarily you know like a slightly more tested version of a package in Manjaro, but it's effectively Arch based if you want to talk about it in the broad sense. Um, but then, yeah, then you've got Solus as well. So they're both rolling releases that I would sort of consider before um, Debian testing. 
and um and yeah like i say you know i know a lot of you guys have had a great deal of success i mean i think ubuntu at one stage was based on debian testing i can't i'm not sure what it is now but uh, but of course the case with ubuntu is that they do a whole lot more work they do you know the ubuntu do a lot more work to debian than um i would say manjaro do to arch for example like ubuntu uh they you know obviously they base their distribution on debian but um they you know there's a, there's a lot of time and effort and work and money that goes into uh taking you know what debian Debian is and turning it into Ubuntu. Ubuntu, I suppose, if you know, if Solids could do it, could become an independent distribution if it uh, if it genuinely wanted to. But I kind of um, feel that perhaps um, there might be a greater purpose, or at least one would hope. So I think I'm going to wrap that up. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to put out a bit of a video saying why I don't tend to jump in the Debian testing um, boat as um, as one might expect. Um, but yeah, it's because you know there are like plenty of small benefits to of course having distributions that are designed for the desktop like for example multimedia codecs are more likely to be readily supported and video drivers uh, tend to be more up to date and all that kind of stuff as well so uh, i do find you know with debian it's it's just like even though it's it's broadly in the right place there's just a lot of little uphill challenges um, that I sometimes feel that you can just bypass with the distribution that's designed to be on the desktop. And Solus is a great one that sort of, uh, you know, a great example to that, I think. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, uh, as always. And um, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.